Hey, this is Josie Young with Affirmation Pod, your home for personal development, where I create actionable content that you can try before you hit the sack tonight. I hope whenever you're listening to this that you're feeling well, that you're putting yourself first, making yourself a priority, and taking care of you. Today's episode is a bit of a vague, actionable tip, but it's an important one, and that's why I wanted to take the time to create it. The next episode will be an affirmation for those of you who are missing, because I'm kind of missing making them too, the affirmation episodes. But I really wanted to talk, since the theme for this month is time management, and if you didn't get the worksheet for this month yet, you can go to affirmationpod.com slash time management to get the worksheet. Again, that's affirmationpod.com slash time management. If you're in the US, you can text time management to 44222. Now, before we start, all management, whether it be time management Next month, we're going to talk about money management. The month after that, we're going to talk about stress management. All this management management, it's self-management. And attention management is definitely also about self-management. When I was a teenager, my options in the evening were to either do my homework or watch TV or talk on the phone with my friends. And I guess one of the upsides of being an only child is that I didn't have to fight with my siblings over the phone and phone time because I had friends who had one, two, sometimes three siblings and I really felt bad for their parents because they had to referee like World War III pretty much because back then there was only one landline, there were no cell phones and every teenager in the house wanted to talk to their friends. Fast forward now, most teenagers have their own device. I have a friend who teaches social studies in a high school and he said this year was actually an unusual year because one of the graduating students didn't have a cell phone. And he said at his school, they all come in in grade eight. So how old are you in grade eight? 13. About 50% have a smartphone and then it typically becomes 100% in grade 12. So this one student is kind of the odd kid out. Now, going back to when I was a teenager, I don't think I was really limited in my options of what I could watch on TV. There was all different channels. There was the Canadian version of MTV, which is much music, and I could watch music videos. But being here in 2016, looking back, I was totally limited in my options because now there's YouTube. You can watch whatever video, whenever you want, however you want. There's Netflix. You can watch movies, TV shows. And now we have Facebook, Snapchat, podcasts. And it's great in the sense that that it's on-demand content that we can go to whenever it's convenient for us. But the management side of it is that we have so much more opportunity for our attention to go anywhere, elsewhere, somewhere, and we're struggling. Sure, some of us are doing better than others, but attention management, it's like a new life skill that we're all being put to the test about every day. It's interesting. Years ago, my husband worked for a company where the bosses asked the IT department to do an internal analysis of the websites being visited by all the employees. And this company had hundreds of employees. And that report showed that the most visited website, want to guess? Yeah, Facebook. So that company actually blacklisted Facebook from being accessible on the computers in the workplace. I guess they thought instead of, you know, having a new policy for the, maybe they already had a policy, but um, they bypassed the option or, or what, for whatever reason decided we're not going to ask our employees to manage their time and manage their attention and keep distance and refrain from visiting Facebook. We're just going to eliminate that option from them altogether. So today for this actionable tip episode, I have three points to make for you to consider when it comes to self-management, attention management. The first is pay attention to your attention. And this is totally for me too. I'm good with putting the phone away when I'm out, uh, when we're at a restaurant, when we're at a park, when, whenever I'm outside my home. However, when I'm in my home, I'm starting to really get cognizant and intentional with, if I'm looking at my phone, For whatever reason, I'm checking email, I'm sending a text, and my husband says something, my daughter says something. I really want to cut down the length of time it takes for me to acknowledge them. And another thing is, I want to acknowledge them and what they said and what they are asking for, whatever it is, with my eyes. I don't want to just say, okay, yeah, 
just a couple more minutes, especially with my daughter. I mean, yeah, with my husband too. I want to stop what I'm doing, look up, look into their eyes and be able to say, could you repeat that? Sorry, I didn't hear it. Or that sounds good. Once I finish this, let's go or whatever the request is. I remember reading a disturbing story. I hope it's not true. I'm guessing it probably is about a doctor who was filling in a report. And as she was doing that, she got a message that was inviting her to a party. And then she replied to say she was going. And then she forgot to put in a very important piece of information into the report. And the patient could have died because that information wasn't in the report. So discipline, self-management, it's a habit and a lifestyle that we need to keep in mind. It may not be somebody's life hanging in the balance, but it is our quality of life and the quality of our relationships and that sense of internal satisfaction and fulfillment, knowing that you're being someone who has control and a handle on your attention and where it goes and where it doesn't go. Because like I talked about before, the possibilities are just endless now. It's an abyss, totally. So my first point is pay attention to your attention. Like imagine there was a camera following you all day and it could see where your attention is and where it goes and what it does all day. I know that's a reality show, whatever, but just think about it. What would that reality show or that camera show at the end of the day where your attention goes and where it doesn't go? So number one is pay attention to your attention. Number two is invest your attention on things with the highest return. There's a barrage of cute videos and photos and tear jerking anythings all over the internet. But at least for me, those aren't things that are going to give me the highest return. And this may be a silly example, but I was clearing out some old stuff in one of our closets and I found some very old ballots I used to do with part of my contract work, some campaigns, and there would be draws for different prizes, gift cards, whatever. Um, And I found a bunch of ballots with like people's, you know, name and phone number on. I'm like, oh, I got to shred these. Well, they're worth at least a thousand of them. And I'm like, ah, but I just decided, okay, if I just take a minute here or there, not every day even, and just shred a bit, and shred a bit, and shred a bit, it'll get done. Now, I'm not there yet. There's probably, I'm going to say two or 300 left, but it'll get done. Now, that's me putting my attention in something that's like, to you, probably not all that important or special. But for me, it gives me a high return because I know once I'm done, I'll be done. And I would have decluttered something in my home. And I'm not saying I don't look at cute videos or images or whatever online, but I limit that. When I feel myself getting sucked in a bit, I ask myself, is this the best use of my time and my attention? And if I need to turn it off, I turn it off. And that's the key point, right? When do you turn it off? And that's the whole self-management, attention management thing. So number one is pay attention to your attention. Number two is invest your attention on things with the highest return for you, for you. That's an important point. Not for who created it, not for who sent it, not for who emailed it to you or whatever it might be. What's the highest return for you? It's your life, right? Number three is, and this is a quote from William James, who's one of the founders, fathers of American psychology. I remember learning about him in high school and then learning about him in university and being like, hey, I already know this stuff. Of course, the course got a lot harder after that. Um, And he said, quote, my experience is what I agree to attend to, unquote. So maybe take some time and really reflect. What do I want to attend to? And this reminds me of one of my time wasters from my worksheet that I talked about in episode 75 around podcasts, where I talk about increasing my filter. I used to scan titles and delete the ones that don't fit what I want to learn and hear about. And now if the title made it through that first filter, but then I'm listening to it and I'm like, yeah, this isn't a fit for me. This isn't what I want to hear about and learn about right now, or it's just not engaging for me, I delete it as well. So what experience are you looking for? Because life is made up of experiences and we choose a lot of those experiences and we need to have filters. We need to have really strong filters on our attention so that we get the experiences we want. So pay attention to your attention, 
Invest your attention on things with the highest return for you and be clear on the experiences you're looking for because that will be the reference point for where your attention goes. Now, if you've had challenges shifting your attention in the past or you know that a goal of shifting your attention and resisting the temptation of different distractions in your life is really hard for you, take a look at my mini course. It's on change and how to make changes in your life where we don't live by default, but we're able to find the strength and skills to live by design and to pay attention to what we want, the experiences we want, the achievements we want. You'll find the mini course at affirmationpod.com slash change and promo code time will give you $30 off. So again, that's affirmationpod.com slash change promo code time for $30 off. This is Josie Ong with Affirmation Pod, your home for personal development. Thank you so much for your attention today and for clicking play, connecting in. Bye for now.